everybody. Kendra and Dan, Dan. here, are yep. back mm -hmm. uh, with another web series here for the Boyertown Museum of Historic Vehicles. This is Casing the Joint. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. It sounds nefarious, but I promise it isn't. <laughs> so, you know, Dan, what do we have here at the Boyertown Museum on display? Stuff. Lots of big stuff. Yeah, a lot, lot, yeah, lot of vehicles. <laughs> like this thing. Yeah. Vehicles. <laughs> yes, it's vehicles. historic vehicles. Yes. I think that's part of our name, maybe. Yes, yes. So, you know, when people come here, there are so many cars and trucks and carriages and bicycles and everything to see. But, you know, we also have a lot of small things, too. Mm -hmm. And I know not everybody, but sometimes people miss the small things, and they're really also pretty darn cool. So they are. here in this uh, series, we're going to take something out of one of the cases, and we're going to learn a little bit more about it. Make sure you don't miss it when you come back next time. So here's our first little guy. This is out of the hood ornament case. Um, as you, if you come to the museum and you walk around and as, right when you exit to go back out to the lobby, you go down a hallway and that hallway is lined with exhibit cases and we have a case full of hood ornaments. So this is our little Mac Bulldog um, that's in there. And I just want to talk a little bit about him. So Mack Trucks, huge Pennsylvania company. Mm -hmm. This is a company that everybody knows you know we have some makes here that people aren't familiar with because they weren't around very long but mac is still a really recognizable name um, now they were started in 1900 by brothers jack and gus mac um, and then more brothers came into the picture later and but they're the two that started it so <clears throat> they actually didn't start in pennsylvania they started in brooklyn new york hmm. and they moved to allentown in 1905 um, and they were builders of big, heavy-duty trucks, which was something um, that wasn't as huge of a market for that, I don't think, as there were for cars. But Mac figured out how to build a heavy-duty truck pretty quickly, and they became very successful, obviously. Um, <clears throat> during World War I, uh, the British government um, bought a lot of Mac ACs and used them uh, to supply their troops on the front lines. Um, so that would have to be a really heavy duty truck. If you know mm -hmm. anything about World War I, the conditions were awful, lots of mud. Yeah, they did snow. not pave the battlefield. No, oh. <laughs> not at all. Um, British soldiers start calling them bulldogs. They're tough. Um, and they also, I think, were inspired sort of by the typical Mac appearance, just kind of this snub-nosed uh, hood here, kind of like a bulldog. So that's kind of where they get this bulldog name from. Um, and that famous Mac, Mac bulldog that we have here, he did not come about though until 1932. Hmm. And okay. he was designed by the company's chief engineer, Alfred Majory. Now at the time, Majory was unable to work. Um, he had some medical issue. I'm not sure if he was um, sick with something or he had an operation and was recovering, but he couldn't go to work, really. So he occupied his time by carving a bulldog. And that year, uh, they put this bulldog on the Mac AB, um, so the lighter duty version of kind of what's, what's behind us. Um, <clears throat> and then the bulldog, started to be put onto the AC models in 1938. Now, <clears throat> that's a long time between World War I when they got this Bulldog mm -hmm. name and then 32 when this was made. Um, the Bulldog still does appear as a logo for Mac, but it wasn't a hood ornament until 32. So before then, it's often, he's often on an emblem on the side of the trucks. And sometimes he's ripping up a book that's titled Hauling Costs. Hmm. which is just so hilarious to me. We have that on this Mac too, actually. That's on the side here um, of our 26 Mac. And uh, he's ripping up that book that's titled Hauling Costs, so. So are you, are you saying that the bulldog term was used before 
the hood the, ornament. The hood ornament. Mm -hmm. Because of the year you just gave for this truck. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. So it was still their thing. Yeah. But this, the iconic hood ornament, didn't come along till a good while later. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And he's been on the Mac ever since. Yeah. Really. <laughs> um, and it's really become their trademark. Now the design changed a little bit. You know, as most hood, if you see really any. Um, car company's hood ornament that's been around for a while, you'll see the hood ornaments usually get more streamlined or, mm -hmm. you know, and the Mac is no different really. Actually in 1979, they make the ears and the tail a little smoother because they had a reputation for being quite the knuckle scratchers or... I, I, I heard, <laughs> I heard, okay, hearsay, I think it was a good source too, that somebody was closing the hood or something and got a ring or a watch yes. or something caught on to an ear. Yes. Okay. I, I read uh, like some forum, you know, posts like people okay. going to talk mm -hmm. about their Macs mm -hmm. and, and I, I read a guy saying that's why I don't wear a wedding, a wedding ring because wow. <laughs> of the, the bulldog. Hmm. So they smooth him out a little in 79. Um, now, <clears throat> you know, at first he's on the trucks that have like exposed radiator caps. So he's, he is like, you know, a hood ornament essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, Mac later puts the radiator access under the, they don't put it right out there in the, right in the front there anymore. They move it, but they still keep the, the bulldog. Mm -hmm. Now he's more like a, a decoration or a handle to open up the, the hood. Um, now back to Majory because he's interesting. Um, he had over 100 patents on behalf of Mac and International Motors Corporation, which is like their holding company. It's, they're related, but I don't think they're actually building anything, but they're. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in the yeah, old advertising. It's, that it's you actually see it. on, okay. it's on mm -hmm. this emblem too. So they're related, but they're not manufacturing. I think it's more like a financial mm -hmm. or a legal, some legal thing. Okay. But um, he had over a hundred patents and it's ridiculous. If you go onto Google patents or whatever and search for him and pages will come up. Um, Air-cooled engine, a railway motor car, uh, the multi-wheel drive for vehicles, a rubber articulated endless track. <laughs> I mean, hmm. Gear shifting mechanism, seat upholstery, there are so, it's so all, many. So all different things. Yeah, yeah, it's not even like he specialized in yeah. everything. It's crazy, he has, there's a lot. But um, he was killed very early, actually, not, um, not too long after he created this. He was killed in the USS Akron crash. Okay, a blimp. Screen. Yes, it was then the largest dirigible in the world. Mm -hmm. It crashed on April 4th, 1933. So he came up with this in 32. So almost, mm -hmm. almost not even a year after. He was only 50. Um, that airship had had several accidents in its history. You'll see a, a photo of it on your screen. Heavy fog and storm conditions made the visibility when it when it uh, launched or, or took off, pretty much non-existent. Um, and it had a rapid descent into the ocean off the coast of New Jersey. Um, 73 were killed. Only three survived the crash. Um, most of the, those who died, died from drowning or hypothermia. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually deadlier than the Hindenburg uh, disaster. Um, now, Majory was a guest on this, uh, the USS Akron, a guest of Rear Admiral William Moffat, who is really the, the, the father of naval aviation. They were both big proponents of these airships and um, enthusiasts. Um, you know, they really wanted to see these things be used um, military and civilian-wise, um, but that's, that's how he died. So he, hmm. despite only being 50 when he died, he still had all these patents. It's amazing how many he had to his name. So um, that's a little story about our little bulldog here and some background. And uh, make sure that when you come visit the museum, you don't ignore um, our cases because there is some really neat stuff in there. Um, so again, uh, we'd love to see you here at the Boyertown Museum of Historic Vehicles. 
Check us out online, www.boyertownmuseum.org or on Facebook. And uh, we would love to see you here sometime. Isn't that come, right? Come and case out our cases. Yeah, don't case, case our joint. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but check yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs>